How does your approach to rehabilitation work with, let's say, disc prolapses or disc-related problems? So this goes to um, this. Uh, when a patient comes to you, you have to ask yourself a really simple question. Uh, by which process is this, going, is this individual going to recover? Mm -hmm. If it's a fresh injury, like a disc injury, it's through a repair process. So you then need to create an environment that supports the repair process. Right. Okay. And uh, that repair being just over probably a, a large number of months, the disc being um, Well, surprisingly, they, they, talk, they talk about uh, for disc problem to regain functionality, not to be absolutely pain-free and mm -hmm. like new, but about four to eight weeks, a lot of it, because that's the time of the repair process. Right. Most of it will when this, during that time. Um, uh, the problem is that you have uh, neural damage uh, and that can prolong pain. Um, but it's still within the inflammatory sphere yeah. because yeah. it's going through a repair process, right. even that, area, uh, that time. Uh, right. but so it, at this stage, our clinical approach is we do whatever treatment is necessary to create that environment whereby the movement. repairs can be most effective. Yeah, you've you got mm. to move it, move it. You've got to move <laughs> it, move it. Or you've got to move it, pump it. Yes, right. That's, that's the way to do Pump it. Pump up the jam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you play guitar, we can do something. No, I have that. a guitar. I can't play guitar. You said earlier on, you get good at what you practice. And I think I've discovered why I'm not good at playing because guitar. Because you were practicing the banjo, that's why. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, no, seriously, you want to, them to move. So mm. even if they can take uh, two steps um, and stop, then you ask them to take two steps uh, 10 times a day and try mm. to keep on moving. And the adaptation part of the process? Uh, adaptation is, uh, let's say, a person has been immobilized in a plaster cast and they've got uh, the remodeling of the area is in a kind of a negative state for functionality because they lost the range of movement, muscle loss, uh, motor control losses, fear of use, and all those kind of things. For that to reverse itself, it's not a repair process anymore. It's an mm. adaptive process, yeah. which is brought on by being active and more active than in the repair phase. Okay, and our role in this is encouraging that activity? That activity, and you can start on the table, it's, it's possible. So there's, in, there's, in, there's even a phase before what you saw now, where I, from passive uh, techniques, I move into a more active. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of building it up for the patient. Yes. And then very quickly it's uh, off the table and doing things like that. Yeah. Because um, these the, the techniques using the repair phase and approaches are not going to be very effective in the adapt adaptive phase or adaptive con uh, related conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, alleviation of symptoms is um, basically, um, you know, if you take an MRI scan of your, one of your patients who had pain for one year uh, and you treat, him, you treat them and after a month they get better and so on, you took another MRI scan of their back, um, would you see any different? Any difference? And the answer is probably not. So the pathology is still there. So the question is, how do they get better if the pathology is still there? And that's through a modulation of their symptoms. So the, the body has the capacity to do that. And it's a physi physiological good thing. And I'm saying that because quite often in osteopathy, we don't want to treat symptoms. We only cure people. But that's what nature does anyway. It, yes. it does curing and it does modulating. So why not use it?